Hey folks, Randy Newberg here. I'm at Yellowstone Wild Game Processing right outside of Bozeman, Montana. And you're probably wondering, why am I here? I'm here because one of the questions we most often get, or at least one of the requests we most often get, is can you do a video that shows how to take care of my elk once I have these quarters at home, or once I have my elk at home? Well, we're gonna do that. We are here imposing on my friends Buzz and Patty who own Yellowstone Wild Game Processing. One of the things you need to understand is there's no right or wrong way because we all have a different feeling about, okay, I prefer more ground or I like steaks or I like roasts or I like whatever. It's whatever you like and whatever you want. And that's the whole idea is to get you the information to understand this is the, the big chunk you're starting with. What are the cuts, the pieces, that get you to the end result of what you want. In this instance, we decided to do an elk. An elk, a deer, an antelope, it's all pretty much the same. It's just a function of scale and size. So let's go inside and uh, see if we can bother Buzz and Patty and their crew. All right, folks, it's gonna be a little noisy in here. This is a commercial processing plant, so I'm gonna talk loud to try and make sure you can hear everything, but Buzz has already taken the hide off this elk. It's a cow elk, and we're gonna get ready to watch him quarter it and then take the quarters and all the pieces and tell us what the cut should be. You're gonna break it down into pieces? Yep. And then take the pieces to one of these stations. Yep. These guys are gonna cut it into whatever the customer has ordered. Steaks, roasts, grind. Yep. And then you're gonna go through the process, package it, and they're gonna get their own meat. Yep. Make sure you get your own meat. They do that here. Yes. What a novel concept, yes. huh? <clears throat> so we're just gonna clean some of the blood shot and the dried stuff off. And it goes without saying, the better someone takes care of their meat out in the field, the more you're going to be able to provide to them. Definitely. I mean, starts if you. Starts with the shot. Starts with the shot. There you go, folks. Starts with the shot. Yep. This piece right here that Buzz is working on is what we call the tenderloin. And whether you're doing it out in the field or you're doing it hanging, do not leave that part to waste. This is the premium part. And you see how it connects down here and then it connects up here. And Buzz is going to take it out as one great big piece. In the field, we really don't have any control right. of cleanliness. Right on the inside of the animal. So any of the stuff that comes from the inside, this will all be, able to be peeled off down, down, to, down to good meat. Just to make sure that in case it was gut shot or wasn't taken care of well exactly. in the field, by taking that outer layer off, you've removed that. Yeah, okay. so we're gonna, we're gonna clean this up and just to be safe. Yeah. Uh, we don't do too much, this is, the only muscle that we take on the inside of the animal, just because of that, we don't have control. Right. It's Where some people will take the inside of the ribs and cut all the stuff out of the ribs, and we don't do that just for that reason. Okay. And if the hunter did this field dressing out in the field, they've already taken and salvaged heart, kidneys, liver, whatever. Yeah. This is just flank, and once again, this inside, this is pretty good, pretty good meat. So this side will be all taken off. 
clean it up, trim it up, and then that flank will probably get ground? Yeah, this will probably get ground. Okay. Now we're just gonna take the shoulders off. So shoulders starting with the front shoulder. Now this is a good idea because everybody will think that they made a good shot. It was a little bit behind the shoulder. Yeah. And then when they read their sheet, I say, well, the shoulder was blown. But this shoulder comes way back into here. Right. So if you make a good shot, you could go through the shoulder. Okay. As someone who cuts meat, would you prefer it to be a long shot right here or a shoulder shot? Well, this is an ideal shot. Oh, right in the neck? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but those, that's the rare occasion, probably. You know, it, it, it depends on the distance. And, yeah. And, right, you know. and with archery, obviously, you're gonna have a different meat salvage issue than with a rifle. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, next shot, you still you still lost a little bit of the front. Oh yeah, look at that. So folks, notice that you do not need a saw. Buzz has all kinds of saws here, but he's not sawing off front quarters. Yeah, when you come around the shoulder, don't get into your loin, your back strap. Right. Keep the keep pull the blade away and be as as close to the blade as possible so you leave the integrity of the back strap yep. or loin. And you're just gonna section the muscles, that's all we're doing. This, that line you're cutting right there represents where the loin or the back strap is. Uh, the, the ribs come like this, the spine like that. That big triangular piece that Buzz followed this line, that is the piece you want to save. That's probably the number two choice piece. Yeah, after the... Tender loins, then your back strap. When you're doing this, the idea is to see bone every time you strip the bone off. So that when you're going parallel to those ribs and those vertebrae. You want to see white of the bone, and then you're not going to leave hardly too much any. On, yeah. Too much on there. And that's the important part: is salvaging every possible piece you can. Yep.
we're going to clean it up at the end of the back strap. Is right about oh, there? Right here. Okay. And then the rest of it would be some sort of neck roast or? Yeah, or mostly burger. Burger? Okay. Yeah. Unless you specifically want neck roast, then we'll go into burger. Okay. The rest will be steak or some, like I often ask you to give me six to eight inches and I make a roast out of the loin. Yep. And a lot of people will just make steaks out of it. Yep. Now on a beef, this part on the other side of the tenderloin, right. this is your New York's. From here back? Yep. On New a York's. beef? Yeah. Or ten or T-bone. T-bone, okay. If you take this and use the bone in. Okay. This is the T-bone, we bone them out. So this section is your New York's, and then this section is your ribeyes. Ribeyes, okay. So what this is, folks, this is what we call the back strap. And he's taken off what some people will call the silver skin or stuff that makes it a little tougher than it needs to be. And when he's all done, the majority of this is going to be either loin roast or steaks, which in the beef equivalent world would be the ribeyes or the New York. And then the upper end is probably going to get ground into burger or chopped up into stew meats, whatever you prefer. See how he's doing so much of this with his hand? This guy's done this before. There you go, now it's all big, now you can use it. So now you see there's this yellowish silver layer. You're just going to fillet that off there, just like you're taking the skin off the, the back of a fish. And then he's going to do the same thing with this part. And when he's all done, you're just going to have these beautiful pieces of meat. So you are sorting some of this by the trim that'll be ground. Yeah, this is this is all a burger bin. That's this burger. one's our burger bin. It's our steak bin. Steak bin. And then this is also another burger bin. Another big. So. So now you've trimmed that entire rib cage of that whole, f whatever, you know, you hear it called all kinds of things, brisket, flank, what do you call it? The side meat. Side, okay. And that'll mostly get me. This made. is the flank area. And so this flank. Is, this is the side. Side. And down in the brisket. Brisket. Uh, there isn't much brisket meat. Okay. On the base? And this is a late season cow, so. Okay, that, that probably had something to do with the quality of the meat also. They're a little, they're a little yeah. This, this cow was taken in January, February. February. So she's going to be leaner than if you shot her in September. Yeah. Okay. And then it'll go in the burger bin? Yeah, it'll go in the burger bin. Can you go ahead and take out some things, make sure.
So now you're breaking down this hindquarter, Buzz. This is the sirloin tip. And that's going to be roast, some steaks, depends on what the customer wants. Roast some steaks. Okay. Yeah. And then what we do here, and this up here, we got the sirloin tip, and then this muscle right here is what we call the tri tip. Okay. Then you got your top and bottom sirloin coming in here. So at the bottom of the knuckle. So if you're out in the field, try to keep these muscle groups the way Buzz is showing it yeah. here. This is pretty much a section of the muscle. Not perfect, but it's really close. Yeah. So you're not going to be losing any of your loads in your skate. And then you're going to come down just below the hip joint. Right here. And then you're going to come at a 90 off of this bone here. Bones. You're going to what? Chase ball. Chase bone. Okay. So if you're out in the field and you do it that way and you bring it to them, they're going to be able to salvage and take as much or have as much flexibility to give you whether you want some sort of steak, you want some sort of roast, and all of the remainder will be ground. ground. So, so it started up there, right above the knee, goes down to the, there, down to the femur, and then knuckle right to this hip joint right here. Then come at a 90 right underneath that. So someone might say, I want a roast, and you'd mm -hmm. keep it intact as a roast, yep. or they might say, I like it steak, and you'd we'll steak it, it up way. for them. Whatever, yeah. whatever, whatever you prefer. They could have half and half each, who knows? Yeah. The whole steak group, the sirloin group, you can just about rip apart with your hands. Almost. <laughs> Not this one. It's tougher, but that's just the bottom off of it. And you're going to try and keep that silver skin intact. Okay. Do a pull test. Pull test is any membrane you can pull with your hands. It's worth removing. Okay. Again, a lot of trim. A lot of trim material off of here, yep. So learn how to cook with burger, because there's always plenty of it. That connects down in there, so if you break that, that makes it. Pretty much just going along the pelvic bone there. Chasing bones. No bloodshot, no dried meat, no hair, and no excess fat. 
whether you're doing it or whether your cutter's doing it, whether you're quartering it out in the field, remember those four basic rules and your end product's gonna be a lot better. Okay. Well, if you're doing, doing it in the field, if you are skinning it, you know, lay your, lay your hide out and then you've got a pretty clean surface. Right, let, let the hide almost be a tarp for you. Yeah. yeah. Now this is your top and bottom round. This is what we're gonna take here. We're gonna come in here and stay at a 90 to that bone pretty much. I usually come up a little bit like that. Chase the bone down. You get to the knuckle, do the best you can, which is kind of a conglomeration of <coughs> connecting tissue and everything right there. Wow. That's your top and bottom round. Top and bottom round. Some people might want roast, some might want round steaks, and some might say, you know what, grind it or chunk it into stew meat. Yep. He, he splits it up, he's splitting it up, top and bottom, and then the eye of the round always goes on the bottom. Okay. You keep the eye on the bottom. Mm -hmm. So this is the bottom, the top, this is the eye. This is the eye right here, this yep. smaller piece that comes like that. Yep. And that's just a section, so you just follow that section and keep it as clean as you can and then you get your whole muscle. And so you can separate that, mm -hmm. and most people will separate the eye. Kind of depends on what, Dep depends on what they want. Deer animals, we tend to do that more often. Right, yeah. but a deer or an antelope, you'd leave the eye attached to, to the bottom. Absolutely. And more to trim up. Yeah, just more to trim it. I love this stuff. I tell you what, Buzz, if I wasn't so old, I'd come and ask for a job. But, right. but you'd fire me. This is my favorite part of hunting, and the, the downside is I'm so busy now, I don't get to do much of it myself, right. which is where guys like you come into play. And then once you get your top and bottom round off of that, then you get your shank. We'll usually burger this, or what the becoming more popular now is the Oso Buco. Yeah, Oso Buco. Anyway, when that, then that is where we do take the saw because they want that bone marrow right. off, off of that line. And then that would be in about three and a half, four inch chunks. So you're gonna get two or three pieces of Oso Buco right there. Right here. Yeah. Okay. You and you would them? need a saw for that. Yeah. <laughs> I got the saw. I'm going to go cut some and I'll okay. show you what they look like. Okay. So this is for that specialty thing, leaves the marrow in there. Yep. And then we'll trim this up. Okay. Like that. Okay, so this is what they'll get with their Yeah. How do you say Asabuco? We'll, we'll put it on the screen. I I pronounce it wrong all the time. Yeah. And then all this connecting tissue in here. Yep. When you uh, boil it and cook it. It just falls apart. It melts. I've right. eaten it. Becomes, it. It's, it becomes it's really excellent. Tender. Yeah. yeah. It's excellent. Yeah. And the rest of this will be taken in there and that will be trimmed up for burger. Is that what? No, we're not going to burger off. So Buzz is in there trimming up the last little pieces off this carcass. <laughs> but that's how you do it. And these guys are trimming up the rest of it. 
what they're going to do then they've got the two bin, three bins actually steaks and roasts in the orange bin burger in the two green bins and they got a great big grinder over here they vacuum seal everything at one time did you paper wrap or have you been uh, vacuum sealing all the time i've been vacuum sealing all the time as far as the business but yeah. years ago we've all, all done paper wrap. Was all paper wrap yeah and double paper cellophane with paper right anything to keep it keep that freezer burned down right so what would you expect the yield to be? If this animal weighs 210, 15 pounds on the hook. With, with a neck, neck shot, we should boned out right around 50% of that hanging weight. 50% of hanging weight should be the end product. Unless the animal, high shoulder shot, really gonna have a lot of problem of blood shot, fragmentation of bones, of lead. Nice pass through on an archery shot, higher yield. Yep. So if someone goes to their processor and says, hey, I think you ripped me off, part of it could be where the animal was shot, how well they took care of it out in the field. Exactly. A whole lot of factors beyond your control. Yep. Anyway, we're gonna describe, describe the shot, uh, put the hanging weight on here, and then at the steak table, I'm going to put all the finished weights for your chopped steaks, burger. This guy didn't want any roast. Okay. So he, he says he wants chops and burger mostly. Yep. One of the things that they do to make sure you get your meat, you see these numbers that perforate off here? They're on the customer's order, and then they follow that through the whole process so that if your tags were number 316, you're going to get the meat from 316 all the way through the process. This person wanted no roast, so you're going to stake all of this? Wow. Yeah. Always checking for hair, always checking for bloodshot. Everybody backs up the person in front of them. They yeah. add the animal and make sure everything is clean and looking good. People are going to quickly recognize these as the back straps. Walk me through what the rest okay. of it is. Back straps, these will be labeled chops. These are the tenderloins. We'll clean them up a little bit. Those will be labeled tenderloins. Top and bottom sirloins. Top and bottom sirloins. The two sirloin tips. If you want roasts, this is normally what we're going to do for a roast. And then we'll trim off the ends and square them up nice and give you one or two depending on what size roast you want. So those, that sirloin would be a great roast. Yeah. Bottom round, eye of the round, and your top rounds. And every bit of this can be made into steak or roast. Yep. And once you trim them up in the pieces you want, the hands and the small little pieces end up going into your burger bin. Start with a square up cut, and then that will go in your burger. Or you want stew meat? Which we'll I do. We'll usually take all the stuff that we square, th square things up, or if we end up with a little bit off of the end. We try to stay three quarters to an inch is a normal cut. Some people want it as thick as two inches. Always looking for hair, always looking for things that need to get cleaned up, double check everything. Okay, on a large bowl, moose. A bull, or bull out. Okay, uh, a, a moose or a bison. You see this section right here on yep. the top round? Yeah. Just for to make it easier to slice up and steak, sometimes we'll take that. Separate it? There. Yeah. 
it's still uh, top round. Mm -hmm. And then the beef name, they call this the elephant trunk. The what? The elephant trunk. Elephant trunk. Unless you specifically want bone in and cut on the saw, everything is knife cut at our facility. That would be a stew made or burger. Stew meat or burger. Stew meat or burger. The bottom round has a small piece of gristle. That usually will cook out and be put in tender. All those will be labeled round steaks. Stew meat or burger. Nice three quarter. Nice three quarter. Notice there's no wedges. It's my pet peeve, wedge steaks. So wedge in other steaks. words, you don't want the wedge pieces. You want consistency and thickness throughout. Yes. A bit of a bland there. Eye of the bottom. Buy meat in the grocery stores, you're going to know that the eye of the round is probably the tender part of the round steaks. Square it up. Now, the back strap I usually go a little bit thicker. Okay. Just because it's a more tender, desirable piece of meat. I go about an inch. Okay. A larger animal, elk, moose. It's cut into singles on deer and antelope. We'll do what we call a butterfly cut. Yeah. And so you lay it down, cut the inside of the muscle, and don't cut all the way. And that's a butterfly cut. And that's because it's a smaller, smaller muscle on deer and antelope then you get a little bit larger steak. This was that tenderloin that came out of there. You didn't know how it had been handled in the gut cavity. Right. So you trimmed layers off there to get down to just this pure, wonderful, absolutely mouth-watering chunk of meat. Yep. This is what it looked like in the animal. And this is what it looks like all trimmed up. Absolutely perfect. Sirloin tip. Square it up. Now, if your customer wanted roast, on a smaller elk, I would just cut this in two, and you'd get two and a half, three pound roast, four of them. Okay. He doesn't. He doesn't want uh, roast. A large elk, you'd get maybe three, a bull. Yeah. Small one, you'd get two roasts. He doesn't want roast. So what we do here? 
mistake him. I'm back to my thinner cut here. Because you got a line of gristle down the middle of it. So you said you went back to your thinner cut on this sirloin. Yeah. Is that because it's not quite as tender as the back strap? Exactly. So in terms of tenderness, you'd go tenderloin, back strap, sirloin, round? Yep. From most tender to least tender? Yep. And that determines how thick you cut it also. Yeah. And your sirloin tip is the least tender of your sirloin. So that is the top sirloin. Yes. And the bottom. Now this is kind of tough because it's got the grain of the meat. It's coming in different directions. Okay. So you, when you're cutting yourself, you try to stay perpendicular to the grain of the meat. No matter what cut it is, you want to be perpendicular to the grain of the meat. Exactly. So is this the top or bottom? This is the bottom. The bottom sirloin. wants 15% suet. Take 3.6 off of that. 3.6, that's the tear weight of the container. Yeah, for the lug. Yeah. And then it'll know how much suet to put in it. 15%. So after sub subtracting the weight of the containers, you're coming up with about 66 pounds yep. of meat ready to grind. Yep. And at fifteen percent you take sixty-six times fifteen percent, you got nine point nine. About ten pounds. About ten pounds you'd add to it. Hundred and eleven finished pounds. Hundred and eleven finished pounds before you put suet in. And that was a 212 pound, 217 pound hanging carcass. Yes. So, yeah, you're, when you said about 50% on an animal that's not all shot up, yeah. slightly over 50%. Yeah. It's pretty easy to get 50%. I turn this on and let it start to do its thing. You'll 
see that this looks heavy on the suet, this customer ordered 15% suet. I usually get 0% because I use most of mine in things like tacos, lasagna, spaghetti, but if you're doing burgers and you want to hold it together better, maybe you do 5% or 10%, but they'll do a second run on this through the grinder and it won't look quite as heavy with suet, but this person wanted 15%. What you want depends on how you plan to use this burger or this grind as your end process. Did you say 11 years and love it? Yeah. All right. I love this stuff. I wish it went all year. I really you do? You don't want to break from it? No. Love it. Love it. People in me, every customer is different, every sheet is different, so. Cool. It keeps you on your toes. Buzz has already split these into the, the top lug is always your chops, your tenderloins, and your sirloins. Yep. And then the second lug that will come through is all rounds. All rounds. So, so right your bags are pre-labeled that say tenders. So the tenderloins are going to go in there. Exactly. And if they're big like this, I just put one to the bag. These are chops, so this whole stack right here. And I usually put enough for two people, okay. unless it's once again specified on my sheet, bag for one, bag for family of four. So if the customer said, look, I got a family of six, you'd put more in a bag? Yes, absolutely. What we'll do is we push this down. They ground 82,228 pounds of elk, 19,000 pounds of deer, almost 4,000 pounds of antelope, 2,200 pounds of moose, and a whole bunch of trim, and Randy Newberg's bison was in that calculation right there. Look at that, that's, that's in one year. I wonder what 2019's gonna look like, because it was a banner harvest in Montana this year. Thank you, bud. You bet. Thank hey, you. Thank you so much. Of course. Really appreciate thank it. You. And there you have it, folks. No right, no wrong, just your own personal preference of how you like to do it, what you intend to do with the meat. But make sure, whatever you do, take as good care of the meat as you possibly can, both out in the field and when you decide to get it processed. Whether you do it yourself or whether you bring it to a place like here at Yellowstone Processing, make sure the animal is properly cared for. That's why we hunt. This meat deserves to be cared for as best as it possibly can.